Alright guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Hyruler and today's video is going over the meta game for Texas Chainsaw Massacre the game. Now, the developers have put out this handy webpage here that I'll be linking in the description of the video below that will be explaining every single thing to do with the meta game. Now, what is the meta game? You guys may be asking. Well, the meta game, as the developers had said, is the game within the game. So this is your attributes, your skill points, the way you build your characters out. So in this video will be going over their explanation for how you build your characters out and the costs associated with building those characters out. All right, so let's begin. They start off by saying we've detailed family and victim attributes and abilities, and now it's time to dive into the meta game. Read on in the hub to know how it works. They go on to say, we know that you are excited to play the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. As promised, we've broken down what the metagame is and how it works. We want to ensure that players have a great time getting their chainsaw on. But first, let's tell you how to chainsaw. Everything from leveling up to exploring the skill tree will be explained below. Where do you start? Whether they are a member of the family or a victim, each character comes with an ability as well as various perks and attributes. These can all be saved in the loadouts. There will be five slots available per character for customizable loadouts. This means that there could be different loadouts for gameplay styles. We want each player to bring their own flair through their loadouts to make for intense, fun, and interesting gameplay during a match. Abilities will be the core of each character's uniqueness. This ties with the role, strengths, and weaknesses. Every ability is able to be upgraded in the skill tree. We will go into more detail further down. Note, there are abilities that can be equipped by family members called grandpa abilities. When family members feed grandpa blood, they can raise his power level, pave the way for grandpa to unlock more abilities, use an unlocked ability in a special slot in the character loadout screen. This means that coordination will be vital with other family members. Remember, grandpa will be much happier when the family plays well together. All right, let's talk perks. Perks can modify a character to give them a certain advantage in a specific area or skill. All perks can be chosen and equipped in the loadout menu. There are three max perks per loadout with a total of five loadouts. This means that each character has potential to leverage a total of 15 perks from within their loadouts. You can access perk selections through a character's skill tree. Only perks that have been unlocked in the skill tree can be equipped on the loadout screen. Each character has different strengths and weaknesses based on their key attributes. Increasing the level of a perk requires the equipped it in the loadout menu. Perks will level up as you play. Perks can range from recovering stamina after not being hurt to increasing stamina in hiding spots or shadows. Now, I believe one of those perks that we saw was Jack in the Box, which describes exactly that. These perks will vary depending on how you build your loadout and which character you are playing. Some fun perks to keep an eye out for will be those that aid in not only making your character stronger, but also helps the family or other victims you're playing with. Of course, they're talking about support perks, and I think many of us have played games like this before, where certain perks will influence the way your teammates will play, which will also kind of vary depending on which player or character they're playing as. And I think there's going to be a lot of intermingling there between what you do and your perks you play as versus your teammates and what character they're playing and the perks that they play. All right, so this is the Lodo screen right here, guys. As noted, you'll have your abilities and perks right here. Now you can see here at the top right, there'll be your loadouts. Of course, it'll be right trigger, left trigger to go through all your loadouts. Your execution right here and your attributes. Now this is going to be for the family. So you can see here that you can go and change this for however you want. And each loadout will have a different, you know, kind of breakdown. So each loadout can be very different between whatever kind of play style you're going for, whichever character you want to play. And then on the right side here will be the breakdown of what you're leveling. So you can see exactly here. This says Bane, level three, below clouds of poison in the path of victims to block your path or laser useful items. And then as you go through the levels, they will increase the effectiveness of what you're trying to do. Now let's move on for perks of note for victims. So let's start with rally leader. When you rally the team by helping other victims, you and your team will recover from being incapacitated faster. Parting gift, when one of victim escapes, all family members will be highlighted for the perk holder. Bounce back better. Healing items you use are more effective. And then for perks of note for the family. Unrelenting, this increases your endurance. Tracker tagged, hitting a victim will highlight them for all family members. Exterior alarms, when active, all critical doors and gates are highlighted if they're open. So you can see here, there are definitely ones that will play off of your teammates for both the victims and the family. Once again, these are going to be very effective and these will be where you want to strategize with your friends and hopefully with other people through, you know, voice and kind of communication. 
but definitely you want to keep a note of all these because once again these are going to be some of the stronger perks as they usually do turn out to be in these type of games all right so let's talk about attributes now attributes are toughness endurance strength proficiency and stealth now these are your basic stats these are your core stats anyone who's played any sort of rpg before will be very familiar with these and they'll definitely have an understanding of how these to you know kind of build out i actually said that these look very similar to like a 2k character for anyone who's played nba 2k um that's just kind of what it reminded me of but you know once again for anyone who's played any sort of rpg you'll be very familiar with the way this works out these attributes can be highlighted in the menu and can be adjusted with unlocked attribute points. Family members each have their own special abilities and attributes with savagery, blood harvesting, and endurance. Players can unlock attribute points through a character's skill tree. You can use attribute points to compensate for weaknesses or boost strengths. Attribute points allow for customization to any and all characters. Different gameplay styles can be made through the allocation of attribute points through a character's skill tree. This means that not all loadouts will work from character to character. For instance, many players are excited to play as Connie for her focused ability. She can pick locks a whole lot faster than her friends, but it's at the cost for stamina and family proximity warnings. One player can choose to put most of their attribute points to Connie's endurance to make up for her stamina loss. Another player can choose to not buffer stamina at all and add as many attribute points to proficiency. There are numerous ways to play a singular character, and whenever a player wants, they can respect their character skill trees to build a new way to play. I think this is great. I think this gives so much freedom to the player. I think what they're doing here basically is allowing the player to kind of look at their character and basically be like, I want to play this way or this way. And I think one of the great things about this kind of freedom is that players are going to be able to explore different pathways, but also the community creation aspect of trying to find the best build and kind of swapping builds back and forth with different people, whether it's on YouTube or Reddit. Now, obviously, one of the things I always talk about is that once people find the most broken build, they're going to all kind of navigate towards that broken build, right? But hopefully for the first week, hopefully first two weeks, there's a lot of experimentation going on and there's a lot of back and forth within the community. But naturally, once basically everyone figures something out, the community will naturally go towards that, right? It is what it is, but let's move on. All right, so now they're going to talk about how to level up. Players can level up by earning experience points. Players can gain XP for actions major in a match. The more important an action is, the more XP players can earn. XP does not only level up your account and character, but also unlocks rewards and gives players skill points. These can be used on all your character skill trees. Now, one of the things that they did mention here, and I don't know if they mentioned this later on in the article, is that just because you unlock a skill point on one character does not mean you have to use it on that character, right? So anything you unlock, you can actually use on a different character. So don't feel like just by playing one character you're locked into leveling up that character. You can play on that one character, but then totally dump your points into a different character to level them up, to unlock skills, and to do the rest of it, right? So never feel like you're locked into one character. Similarly to Blood Points in Dead by Daylight, if anyone's familiar with that, just because you play, you know, let's say Nick Cage, for example, does not mean you're not able to, you know, level up Leon. You know, you can do back and forth like that, which I think opens up a lot of freedom, once again, for the players. So let's talk about some of the actions that can earn you XP. These could be winning a close encounter, turning the generator on, escaping, dismantling traps, and healing your teammates. Perks and abilities that are equipped during your matches will level up. This means that over time, it'll get stronger the more you play. Another way to level up the character you're playing as will be based on the amount of skill points used in a character's skill tree. Every playable character is a maximum of 10 levels to complete. A player's level and character's level are two different aspects of the metagame. Your account level ranks up with the XP you earn. Your character's level ranks up through your skill tree unlocks. By looking at both player and character level, you'll be able to discern how dangerous or elusive they can be in a match. Your player progression will always be tracked through progression tab in the main menu. It will break down all playable characters and what level you've reached with them. In this menu, you'll be able to see all your stats ranging from how many kills you've got to how much blood you've lost. That way, you can find the exact stack to brag about when you sit at the dinner table with the family. It is highly recommended that you play as both family members and victims in order to learn the strengths and weaknesses of each character inside. This way, you can use that knowledge to your advantage when building your loadouts and unlocking skill tree nodes. Very simple, understandable. To understand the whole game, you want to play the whole game as encompassing as possible. I think that makes sense for most people. All right, now let's talk about the ability unlock tree. Now that the bases are covered, let's dive into the ability unlock tree where the metagame picks up. Every character's special ability can be leveled up. The default setting for each ability is the base level and each has four levels they can progress through. 
From the first level, you can add a bonus to an ability to make it more effective. Note that the bonuses stack on top of one another. And be careful to pick your bonuses wisely. For instance, as you begin to unlock your abilities, you will only be able to pick adjacent unlocks. Let's say you pick a far left upgrade in row one. So for example, it'll be right there. This means that you cannot choose any ability in the far right in the row two to unlock. So basically what this means is that when you look at the pathways here, so let's go with their example. Let's go to the far left level one, this bottom left one. Now we see basically I can go up to level two or I can go across to the middle level two, right? Now from the middle level two, I can basically either go to the top left, to the top mid or the top right. Basically, what it means is that there has to be a connecting point that moves either upwards or to diagonally up, right? You can't go back. You can't go sideways. It basically is either going forward, upwards, or going diagonal upwards. That's basically all it's talking about there. Now let's talk about the skill tree. Character skill trees have been referenced through this hub post, and here we will deep dive into the ins and outs. The skill trees where players can earn and collect new features for the characters that they are playing as. This is how you populate your loadout. Every character has their own skill tree with a unique layout. Progressing through the skill tree is how players will expand each character's loadout possibilities. In order to progress through the skill tree, players will have to buy nodes. These nodes can be bought with skill points, which will be gained by leveling up your overall player level. Players will be able to see what each node does, how it works, how much it costs to unlock it. All this information will be readily available in the description box when it's highlighted. The bottom left corner of the skill tree will show how many skill points you've spent. Also, it will show players how many skill points they've invested into a character. Note that different nodes will cost varying amounts of skill points. This cost will depend on the power of the perk being unlocked and which character it's for. Spending skill points will increase a family or victim's character level. This shows the potential strength of a selected character. So this will be shown to everybody in the lobby. One of the things that the developers talked about in their stream today was that when you see someone with a very high level character that come into the lobby, you know that they probably have a very decent loadout and you want to try and play around that, right? So they talked about how the metagame can be even a metagame within itself and how there's going to be some mind games between people in the lobby. We'll remain to see how it goes. Of course, as I mentioned, a lot of the time it's about which broken build is going to be, you know, kind of dominating and just using the broken build. The developers are a little more hopeful that things will kind of be a more varying, balanced approach to everything and that there won't be this kind of huge kind of broken kind of stuff going on. But I think for many of us who've played online video games before, we kind of have, have an understanding that things will be broken and the community will probably exploit them until they're kind of patched, whether that's going to be nerfed or other things are going to be buffed. It's just kind of the way things go at this point. All right. They go on to say there will occasionally be paths that will be split as a special node called a branch path. Once you pick one path, the other direction will close. This means that you should make sure that you look at which nodes you prefer before committing to them. Now, they talk about committing to them, but respects are free. So if, say, for example, you go up a path and you're not really too sure of it, you can just respect get all your points back and go up the different path. So, yes, do you want to make sure you're committing to something and make sure you understand exactly where you're getting out of it? Of course. But there's no penalty to respecting, so don't feel like you have to make a lifelong, you know, commitment to something. You can just respect, go back, and change it, and you know, move on to the different path. There will be several node types depending on whether you've selected a family member or victim. There are perk nodes that unlock perks to help you build how you want your characters to play. These can be equipped in the loadout section. Each perk has three levels that you can see in the description box. A different type of nodes will be grandpa's ability nodes. These are only for family members. Nodes will unlock grandpa abilities, which can be equipped from the loadout screen. Buffs for the family can be unlocked during a match by feeding grandpa blood. And then random nodes, random selection of perks that are not part of a character's main skill tree. They go on to say, let's see how this looks if you're playing as Leland. At the base of your tree, you can move up to a branch node where if you look to your left, you can choose to level up toughness. And if you look to your right, you can level up endurance. Those are two attributes, right? If you want to build a stronger Leland, you can pick toughness, but that means the path to level up endurance will close. However, you don't need to worry about paths being closed off because you progress through a character skill tree, you will reach branch paths that can aid players in working around the map. If that doesn't suit you, you'll be able to respect your ability tree at any time. As I said, you can get bonus if you want to explore different ability paths. Players will not be locked into the set playing style. You're free to switch whenever you want. It will not reduce the ability levels. It will just change which bonuses are unlocked. So there you go guys that is everything that they talked about today skill trees ability points the rest of it everything is here as they call it the metagame now 
With that being said, if you want more Texas Chainsaw Massacre, the game news, make sure to subscribe to the channel, like the video, leave a nice little comment, and I'll make sure to give you guys everything as it comes out between now and launch. And I can't wait to play this with you guys over on my Twitch channel. The link will be in the description below. As many of you guys know, my normal outro here is, of course, thank you guys once again for watching the video. Enjoy the rest of your day and night. Take care to care yourselves, and I'll see you guys next time here. Peace.